The design criteria for this greenhouse extension was one that would provide the quail with a safe and heavily planted area, which was ideal for nesting and raising chicks, and also a warmer area for them in the winter. Normally, my quail sleep in a little pallet wood house we made for them, but they tend to like to sleep outside on the ground in little dugout sleeping nests that they make. They also do tend to pair off in the breeding season, and I've noticed recently that they sleep together in pairs with their wings intertwined. It's, it's rather sweet, actually. They, they go back to front, and the wings dovetail into each other. So I believe that putting them away in the communal house in the breeding season actually breaks that bond. If you watched my film on broody quail that I did last year, you'll see that that's one of the reasons I believe that my quail didn't go broody, the, the particular one that was paired off. The other function too of the breeding area is that it should provide a habitat for invertebrate protein which is so essential to the quail when they're in the breeding season and also for the quality of the eggs and for the chicks when they hatch. Juveniles are thought to eat a diet which is predominantly invertebrates. The extension was also deliberately angled to avoid narrowing the pathway and view to the chicken coop. We had six identical sized recuperated windows, which were the same height as the existing greenhouse walls. These, when screwed to support frames and posts, make a very rigid side wall and obviate any need for further cross bracing, which would have spoiled the aesthetic of the design and also the view of the quail. With regard to the construction of the roof, uh, we made a jig out of pallets, you can see it here, to create identical roof trusses. The six windows also set the length of the extension. The rest of the structure was covered with 200 micron UV stabilised polythene sheeting. And in order to give direct access to sunlight for the quail so they could get their vitamin D3 requirement and also to allow ingress of rainwater to water the vegetation, two of the roof panels between the trusses were wired. They also had detachable polythene panels to cover this wiring in the winter and keep the quail warm. If you're wondering what vegetation I planted in here, then I used a winter cover crop, biomass, and I planted that pretty thickly in the hope that although they might eat some of it, they would leave some of it to grow taller. And then I also had a lot of vegetables for the chickens that came from the organic shop, and some of it was actually sprouting already, so I planted that. Carrots, particularly useful because I knew that the quail wouldn't eat the carrot tops and onions, of course. I tried salsify, but uh, the oyster plant, but they actually love that, so I'm going to have to leave that to grow and fence it off a little bit, I think. And there was also a few other vegetables like turnips, which I knew they would eat straight away, so... I gave them the choice that they could eat or leave it and hopefully that some of it would grow and be a suitable nesting site. Providing that should make the quail think that this is a good environment for them to breed in and they're already showing lots and lots of courting behaviour. So 
fingers crossed. Do, oh, Ooh. he's shouting for happiness. So do we think that it, they're going to have eaten all the greenery by the time we get back? No. Ooh. Got... Why did they try to rip the female's feather, feathers off? Oh, it's a long story. <laughs> Andy and I are making animation over on Patreon. If you want to, you can follow this link to see what we're doing. There's no obligation, but if you'd like to, you can support us for as little as $1 a month. As usual, thanks so much for watching. <laughs>